Hello. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to generate confidence interval estimates using our graphing calculators. Let's start with generating confidence interval estimates for the population proportions. Exercise number 32 from section 7.2 in your textbook reads, an important issue facing Americans is a large number of medical malpractice lawsuits and expenses that they generate. In a study of 1,228 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits, it is found that 856 of them were later dropped or dismissed. So for part A, they say, what is the best point estimate of the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed? So they're asking you to create the best point estimate of the population proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. And the best point estimate for the population proportion is the sample proportion. You can see that we randomly selected 1,228 medical malpractice lawsuits. So that's the size of our sample. And out of that 1,228, 856 of them were later dropped or dismissed. So we can calculate the proportion that were dropped or dismissed by dividing the two numbers. Getting our calculator out now, we can take our 856 and divide it by 1,228 to get an estimate of 0.6971 approximately. About 69.71% of the medical malpractice lawsuits were dropped or dismissed. And we can use that now, our sample proportion, as the best point estimate for the population proportion. Now, for part B, they're asking us to construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the true proportion of lawsuits that were either dropped or dismissed. So we can use our point estimate and add and subtract the corresponding margin of error for our 99% confidence to get that interval. Now, in your graphing calculator, we can generate these confidence interval estimates by accessing the button STAT, then navigating over to the rightmost submenu of tests and selecting the function 1PropZInt. That means we are going to estimate one proportion using the Z or the standard normal distribution by creating a confidence interval estimate. So let me go back the, to the uh, slide with the problem and get my calculator back out. And let's go to stat, followed by tests, and then we scroll down until we find the one prop Z int. Once we select that, it's going to prompt us for information. The letter X stands for the number of things in your sample that exhibit a certain characteristic or answered a certain way on a survey. And in this case, we want the number of lawsuits that were later dropped or dismissed, so 856. N represents the size of your sample, and we know that to be 1,228. And we want to generate a 99% confidence level, so we type that in as 0.99. Then we highlight the calculate and hit enter. And it gives us a confidence interval estimate of 0.66329 to 0.73085, meaning our 99% confidence interval estimate of the true proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits is somewhere between about 66.3 to 73.1%. Now notice on this screen, they also give you a reminder of the sample proportion that was used as well as the size of your sample. So the true proportion is somewhere between 66.3% and about 73.1%. For part C, they ask you, does it appear that the majority of such suits are dropped or dismissed? Meaning, is our estimate truly greater than 50%? Well, since the lower bounds and upper bounds are both above what would be considered a majority, which is greater than 50, we can say, with about a 99% confidence that yes, the majority of such suits are dropped or dismissed. And that's a demonstration now of how we calculate a confidence interval estimate for one proportion using our standard normal distribution. How about the population mean? Well, if we know the population standard deviation and the size of our 
sample is either sufficiently large or the original population is normally distributed, we can use the standard normal distribution as well. For example, number 22. A simple random sample of 40 salaries of NCAA football coaches has a mean of 415,953 and a standard deviation of 463,364. Now they ask us to find the best point estimate of the mean salary of all NCAA football coaches. So the best point estimate of the mean is the sample mean, which they've actually given to you already as 415,953. We can take that point estimate now and construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean salary of NCAA football coaches by calculating now the margin of error for this confidence interval estimate. And the way that we're going to do this now is to use stats, navigating over to the tests again, and then scrolling down until we find Z interval, meaning we want to create a confidence interval estimate using the standard normal distribution of the mean. So let's go back here to our calculator. Actually, let me go back one slide and then bring up the calculator. If we go to stat, oops, excuse me, stat followed by tests and the z interval function, you're going to be prompted for either data or descriptive statistics. Now for this problem, you're not given the original data. You're only given descriptive statistics, the mean, standard deviation, sample size. So we're going to highlight stats and hit enter. We're going to type in the population standard deviation, 463,364. We're going to type in the sample mean of 415,953 and then the size of our sample of 40. We want a 95% confidence interval as to the mean, so our C level, our confidence level, is 0.95. Then we highlight, calculate, and hit enter. And we're told that the true mean of football coaches in the NCAA is somewhere between 272,358 and 559,548. And it also lists again the sample mean as well as the size of the sample used. Now, look what they say for Part C. They ask you, does the confidence interval that we just calculate contain the actual population mean of 474,477? And what we find out is, yes, the true population mean salary of all NCAA football coaches is in the confidence interval estimate that we calculated. Because consider this, our sample of 40 salaries, we actually calculated a mean that's less than the true population mean. So that might lead someone to you know, wonder, well, maybe football coaches truly don't make $474,477 anymore. Maybe it's lowered. So we pull the sample and we create this confidence interval estimate and notice, well, since the population mean is still in that confidence interval estimate, that 95% confidence interval estimate of the true mean, then we acknowledge that that 415,953 is not significantly different than the true population mean. Now, let's look at another problem. When 14 different second-year medical students at Bellevue Hospital measured the blood pressure of the same person, they obtained the results listed below. Assuming that the population standard deviation is known to be 10 millimeters mercury, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the population mean. Ideally, what should the confidence interval be in this situation? So notice, they did not give you any descriptive statistics. They just gave you raw data. But we do know the population standard deviation, so we're going to be able to use now the standard normal distribution to create this confidence interval as to the mean. So we'll want to create, you know, we'll want to 
calculate now the sample mean, because after all, that is the best point estimate. But actually, our graphing calculators are pretty sophisticated in this fashion. One of the things we'll want to do is actually input this list of data into our graphing calculators by selecting Stat, going to the Edit menu, and then hitting Enter. I've already typed in these blood pressure amounts into List 1, all 14 pieces of data. From here, I can go to Stat, over to Tests again, and calculate another Z interval. Except this time, I don't have descriptive statistics, I just have my raw data. So for the input, I'm going to highlight data and hit enter, and the interface will change. It's going to ask me for the standard deviation, which we know to be 10 millimeters mercury. Oops, i got to go back. So I type in data, type in 10 for the population standard deviation. I specify my list to be list 1, that's where I input all of these measurements. Frequency you should leave as 1, and the confidence level they ask us to find is 95%, so again 0.95. Then I highlight calculate, and I find out that the true proportion, or the sorry, the true mean uh, blood pressure for this person should be between 128.69 and 139.17 millimeters mercury. And it tells me that the best point estimate would have been 133.928, on and on and on. They also give us the sample standard deviation, as well as a reminder that the number of values we used in our sample is, again, yes, 14. And that's how we calculate now the confidence interval estimate, confidence interval estimate of the mean when all we have is the data. Now, suppose we don't know the population standard deviation, requiring us to use something else, like the student's T distribution. For this problem, for the Atkins Weight Loss Program, they say in a test of the Atkins Weight Loss Program, 40 individuals participated in a randomized trial with overweight adults. After 12 months, the mean weight loss was found to be 2.1 pounds, with a standard deviation of 4.8 pounds. Now, the best point estimate, again, is, of course, the sample mean. But now, to construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the mean weight loss for all subjects, for our population of people on the Atkins diet, we'll have to use the student's t-distribution, which means a different function in our graphing calculators. And that's going to be stat, test, t-interval. So we'll click the stat button, navigate over to the test submenu, and select t-interval. So let me bring up my graphing calculator, go to Stat, and Tests, and then scroll down until I find T interval. Now here you are going to be prompted again. You can use raw data or descriptive statistics, which is what we're given for this problem, descriptive statistics. The mean weight loss was found to be 2.1 pounds. The standard deviation, they said, was 4.8. The number of tests that we performed were on 40 individuals, so our sample size is 40, and we want a 99%, so 0.99 confidence level. We highlight calculate and hit enter, and we find out the confidence interval estimate for the mean weight loss for our adults who follow the Atkins program should be anywhere between 0 0.04484 and 4.1552, so anywhere between 0 0.05 pounds and 4.16 pounds. And again, they summarize it now with the sample mean, standard deviation, a number of elements. So, does the Atkins program appear to be effective? Well, yeah, because zero is not contained in there, so you do lose weight. But is it practical? Four pounds? Maybe not, especially after 12 months. But, statistically speaking, it is significant. And that concludes this video.